All right, instead of spending time recording uh, lecture notes, I thought I would record working through the homework sets. So after this first one, I need some feedback from you guys to know if it was helpful or not. In Connect Math, you should have very similar problems. They won't have the same numbers, uh, but the directions will be the same on each of the problems. So here we go on section 1.7, properties of real numbers and simplifying expressions. Question number one says, rewrite the expression using the commutative property of addition. So I'm gonna go make some notes as we go. Commutative property of addition says that a plus b is equal to b plus a. You're going to need to know that. So for the example, it says 5 plus negative 3. So if I'm using the commutative property of addition, I want to rewrite the terms in the other, in the reverse order. So I'm going to write, oh, I'm going to write negative 3 plus 5. Number two, rewrite the expression using the commutative property of multiplication. Okay, commutative property of multiplication says that a times b is equal to b times a. Let's use that to rewrite y times negative 22. So I'm gonna write it as negative 22 times y. I could write it without those parentheses and just do negative 22 times y because that times is understood. Notice over here on the left, you have to put the parentheses. Otherwise, you would have y minus 22. All right, number three, rewrite the expression using addition. Then apply the commutative property of addition. Commutative property of addition, one more time, is a plus b is the same as b plus a. Hey, I want to rewrite that subtraction problem using addition. So we know that 6x minus 9 is the same as 6x plus negative nine, right? I can add negative nine to six X. Now I want to use the commutative property of addition and I can say that six X plus negative nine is the same as negative nine plus six X. Number four, use the associative property of addition to rewrite the expression. Here's a new term, a new concept. Associative property of addition says that A plus parentheses B plus C is the same as adding up A plus B first and then adding C. So it's an order thing. Remember order of operations? And here's another one that I'm throwing out at you. PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is the um, phrase that helps you remember the order. You have to do what's in the parentheses first before you do the addition. Well, what's in parentheses on the left side is B plus C. So if you add B plus C first and then do A plus that number, that's the same as adding A plus B and then adding C to that number. All right, so for the example, negative three plus parentheses four plus Z. I'm gonna move those parentheses here. Okay, so I'm going to write it as parentheses negative 3 plus 
4, close my parentheses, and then put plus z. Uh, one more time, instead of adding the second and third term first, I'm going to go add the first and second term first. Let's practice it again, I bet. Part two, the expression can be simplified. Okay. Do you have, can you add what's in parentheses? Can you add negative three plus four? And the answer is yes. Negative three plus four is one. And then you still have plus Z. Question five, introducing you to the uh, associative property of multiplication. And again, associative is just with parentheses. A times B times C can be rewritten as A times B times C. Okay, so for this example, if you have negative seven times four times X, you can rewrite that as parenthesis negative seven times four and then times X. I bet that's what's down here, yes. So I can do negative seven times four and then times X. You might have to write it as negative seven times four in parentheses times X. I don't know exactly how uh, picky connect math is. I don't know if it gives you this little times on the palette um, or not. Okay, can you simplify this? Can you do negative seven times four? The answer is yes, you can simplify that. Negative seven times four is negative 28. And then you have times X. You might write it just as negative 28 X. Number six, again, associative property of multiplication. Sorry, my tongue is a little tired earlier this morning. A times B plus, uh, times C is equal to A times B times C. That's the property we're using. Okay, negative seven parentheses, negative one seventh W. I'm going to write it as negative seven times negative one seventh. That's in the big set of parentheses times W. You may need to put those, both of those numbers in parentheses on Connect Math. Okay, can you do the multiplication that's in this set of parentheses? Can you simplify it? And the answer is yes. Okay, if you need to do, let me go open up another program. Hold on. Okay, on the calculator, I'm going to show you stuff on the calculator as we go. This little button down at the left of the enter key, that's your negative sign. This one up here is the subtraction sign. I'm wanting to put in on my calculator negative 7. That's in parentheses. Then I want to do another set of parentheses and write negative 1 7. Now watch, negative, if I hit alpha and y equals, number 1 says give me a numerator and a denominator. I'm just going to hit enter. Then I can type in one arrow down to seven parentheses. I just told the calculator to do negative seven times negative one seven. Here are the keystrokes down here. If you want to practice that, I'm going to hit enter and I get the number one. All right, so that does simplify to one times W. One's the number in, in the parentheses, right? Or we can just write that as one W, or we could just write it as W, because one times W is just W. 
Okay, number seven. Associative property of addition. Instead of writing A plus B plus C, we're going to write it as A plus parenthesis B plus C. Okay, so here we go. If we have, you see these brackets? These brackets are like a big set of parentheses. It says add x plus negative 2 first, then add 5. So I want to write that as x plus a big set of parentheses, negative 2 plus 5 in my big set of parentheses. Can you simplify that? Okay, on my calculator, I want to go see if I can simplify negative 2 plus 5. Let me clear this out. All right, I have negative 2. Remember the negatives down to the left of the intersign, plus 5, and I get 3. So this simplifies to x plus 3, or I can just write it as x plus 3. All right, number 8 says to use the distributive property to clear the parentheses. This is a new term here in this homework set. The distributive property says if you have a times b plus c, you're going to distribute to A and say A times B plus A times C. So A times B plus A times C. All right, so on our example, negative two parentheses 5Y plus nine. I'm gonna do the negative two times 5Y plus negative two times nine. So I'm gonna go over to the side and write that out. Negative two times five y plus negative two times nine. Now I can use my associative property and say that this is negative two times five and then times y and then plus negative two times nine. All right, I'm gonna to go to my calculator and find out what is negative two times five and also what is this one, the negative two times nine on my calculator. So negative two times five is negative 10 and then negative two times nine is negative 18. All right, I have negative 10 times y plus negative 18. I can also write that as negative 10y minus 18. Instead of writing plus a negative, I can write just minus 18. Okay, number nine, I have a feeling we're gonna get practice, a lot of practice on this. Distributive property again, A times B plus C is A times B plus A times C. A times B plus A times C. All right, if I have the problem seven times six A minus B, I'm gonna do seven times six A minus seven times B. Here we go. Seven times six A minus seven times B. Now, what is seven times six? A minus seven B on my calculator. 
I have, what was the problem? Seven times six. Seven times six is 42. 42A minus 7B. That's the answer. 42A minus 7B. All right, use the distributive property to clear the parentheses. Now we're going to be dealing with fractions. Do not let that scare you or trip you up. Your calculator can handle fractions just like uh, whole numbers. The keystroke again, to get it to put a fraction up there, watch, it's alpha y equals, and then hit enter. That puts a fraction up on your screen. All right. So let's go do the problem. Using the distributive property, I'm going to do negative 5 eighths times 5D minus negative 5 eighths times 16. So let's write that out to the side. I'm showing my work. Negative 5 eighths times 5D, and then I have minus negative 5 eighths times 16. Okay. I want to, on my calculator, go do negative 5 eighths times 5, and then I have D, minus, okay, before I go put it on my calculator, here's another thing that you need to remember. If I have minus a negative, I can turn that into plus. And then I'm going to type in on my calculator 5 eighths times 16. Negative 5 eighths times 5. So negative 5 eighths parentheses, times, oops, parenthesis, 5, is negative 25 eighths. Negative 25 eighths D plus, now I'm going to do 5 eighths times 16. Here comes 5 eighths. 5 over 8 parenthesis times 16 is 10. So my answer is negative 25 over 8 D plus 10. Okay, I want to go show you another way to work this problem. That minus there in the middle might be messing you up. Before I start the problem, I'm going to go write the rewrite it as negative five eighths parenthesis five d plus negative sixteen. All right, now I have a plus there. Using the distributive property, I'm going to write that as negative 5 eighths times 5D plus negative 5 eighths times negative 16. Then on my calculator, I can go do the negative 5 eighths times 5, and then I have D plus negative 5 eighths times negative 16. And on the calculator, we saw that that was negative 25 eighths D plus, okay, negative 5 eighths times negative 16, negative 5 eighths times negative 16 is 10. negative 25 eighths D plus 10. 
Number 11, distribute the property. Okay, the question says negative parenthesis 9c plus 6. You don't see it, but there's really a negative 1 out front. This says negative 1, 9c plus 6. So now I'm going to distribute that negative 1 that's out front. I'm going to give it to both terms. I'm going to say negative 1 times 9c plus negative 1 times 6 on the calculator. If I have negative 1, oop, negative 1 times 9 is negative 9, so I get negative 9c plus negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Now I'm pretty sure it would accept negative 9c plus negative 6, but I want you to notice instead of writing plus a negative, I'm going to write that as negative 9c minus 6. Number 12. Ooh, now we have three terms in parentheses. We're going to have to distribute that negative 5 out front to all three terms, to all three of those guys. So here we go. Negative 5 times negative 8a. Okay, instead of writing it as minus, I'm going to write it as plus negative 2b and then plus 6. I wanted to write it with plus on everybody. And okay, now I'm going to distribute that negative 5. All three times. Negative 5 times negative 8a plus negative 5 times negative 2b plus negative 5 times 6. Negative 5 times negative 8. Negative 5 times negative 8 is 40. So I have 40a plus negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10 plus negative 5 times 6. Negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. Now, Connect Math is probably not going to like you writing plus a negative number. So I'm going to rewrite it as 40a plus 10b minus 30. Number 13, distributive property again. I have negative 6, 6 plus y. I'm going to distribute the negative 6 times 6 plus negative 6 times y. So here we go. Negative 6 times 6 plus negative 6 times y. Negative 6 times 6 on my calculator. Negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. Plus negative 6 times y is a negative 6y. Again, if I have plus a negative, I can rewrite that as just subtract 6y. So I'm going to have negative 36 minus 6y. Okay, number 14 says to match the statement with the property that it describes. My statement says 8 times 1 8 is equal to 1. Okay, the numbers 8 
and 1 8, those are reciprocals. When I multiply reciprocals, this is really the number 8 over 1, right? When I multiply 8 over 1 times 1 over 8, I multiply straight across, I would get 8 over 8, which is 1. Okay, that's not associative. And here I am going through the process of elimination. Associative is with parentheses. You move the parentheses. Distributive property, well, that's when you do that whole distributing thing. That's not it. Identity property of the multiplication, that's when you do one times something. That's not it. Commutative property of addition, well, that was A plus B equals B plus A. That's not it. Commutative property of multiplication, that was A times B equals B times A. That's not it. Inverse property of addition. Okay, here comes the here come the new ones. Inverse property of addition says if you add A plus its additive inverse, you get zero. That's this one. Associative property of multiplication. We've already done that was A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. That's not it. Identity property of addition. Inverse property of multiplication. Okay, that's it. That's the answer. Because inverse property of multiplication, if you multiply a number by its inverse, which is 1 over A, you're going to get 1. That's what the inverse property of multiplication says. Let me erase this one so it doesn't confuse you. That's the one we're looking for. 8 times 1 over 8 is equal to 1. Just so that you have them all written down, um, I went ahead and rewrote all of the rules. Associative property of addition is A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C. Distributive property of multiplication over addition is A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. Identity property of multiplication is A times 1, that's the identity, multiplicative identity, equals A. Commutative property of addition, A plus B equals B plus A. Commutative property of multiplication, A times B equals B times A. Inverse property of addition, A plus negative A is zero. Associative property of multiplication, A times B plus C equals A times B times C. Identity property of addition, A plus zero equals A. And then, of course, the inverse property of multiplication is A times 1 over A equals 1. All right, number 15. We want, to, uh, for the following expression, list the terms and their coefficients. Okay, I'm going to go in here and say I've got this term plus that term plus this term. Uh-oh, I see minus 6y. Watch what I'm going to do to it. I'm going to turn this into plus a negative 6y. I'm going to be a little sneaky and erase that. And then I'm going to say plus, oops, plus a negative 6y. Okay, so there's my last term. So my terms, uh, if there's more than one term, separate them with commas. My terms are negative 16, oops, do it in red for the answer. Negative 16 x squared y, that's one term. 5x, that's another term. 16, and then negative 6y. There are four terms in that expression. Now, what is the coefficient? The coefficient is just the number. So, for the negative 16 x squared y, the coefficient would be negative 16. For 5x, the coefficient would be just 5. 
for 16, the coefficient is 16. And for negative 6y, the coefficient would be negative 6. And now we're going to start combining like terms. If you have terms that have variables, in order to combine like terms, the variables have to look exactly the same. So for number 16, I see negative 6p plus negative 8p. I can combine those terms. Negative 6 apples plus negative 8 apples would be, okay, on my calculator, negative 6 plus negative 8. I have negative 6 plus negative 8. I get negative 14. This would be negative 14p. Number 17, negative 3x squared plus 16x squared. So the x squareds are exactly the same, same variable to the same exponent. So I can say that that's going to be negative 3 plus 16x squared. On my calculator, negative 3 plus 16 is 13. So I get 13x squared. Number 18, combining like terms. Okay, this is when I'm going to encourage you to get your uh, different colored pins out. First of all, I don't like those uh, minus signs here. I like to add everything. So I'm going to rewrite that. 9x cubed y plus 4 plus negative 8 plus negative 1 x cubed y. This might be confusing you a little bit that I went ahead and put a 1 there because it's minus x cubed y. So that's the same thing as saying plus a negative 1 x cubed y. All right, now different colored pins. I see an x cubed y and an x cubed y. What is 9 x cubed y plus negative 1 x cubed y going to give you? Well, 9 plus negative 1 is 8. So I have 8 x cubed y. Now, another set of like terms, I have 4 plus negative 8. 4 plus negative 8 is negative 4. So I have that plus negative 4. I could rewrite that as 8x cubed y minus 4. I could turn the plus negative into a minus. Number 19. Uh-oh, decimals. Don't let that mess you up. I am going to rewrite it and get rid of the subtraction, though. I don't like seeing subtraction signs. I'm going to write it as 2.7z plus negative 8.2z plus 5 plus negative 14.5. Okay, with my z's, I have 2.7z plus negative 8.2z. So my calculator, I'm going to type in 2.7 plus negative 8.2. 2.7 plus negative 8.2 is negative 5.5. If I have negative 5.5z, okay, now the number, I have 5, plus negative 14.5. 5 plus negative 14.5 is negative 9.5. So I have plus negative 9.5. Instead of writing plus a negative, I'm going to write negative 5.5z minus 9.5. 
that plus a negative turned into minus. Now, can I combine any of those? And the answer is no. This one has a coefficient times z. That one's just a coefficient. Those are not like terms. I cannot do anything to those. Number 20, simplify by clearing parentheses and combining like terms. So I have negative 3, 2x plus a negative 5. That's in the parentheses. And then plus 14. Okay, I'm going to distribute that negative 3 to both terms in the parentheses. So showing steps, I'm going to do negative 3 times 2x plus negative 3 times negative 5 plus 14. Negative 3 times 2 on my calculator will give me negative 6x. Negative 3 times negative 5 is 15, so I have plus 15 plus 14. Another thing to notice, see how I'm always working down, and these are expressions, so I have not used an equal sign. I don't like how they do this here and put that equal sign there. That's bad, but uh, it is what it is. I'm just simplifying. I'm not solving anything. Okay, collecting like terms. I see just a number 15 plus just a number 14. I don't see anything that will that's like with an x, so I just keep that one. Negative 6x plus 15 plus 14 is 29. We're almost there, guys, hang in there. Okay, I have three. I don't like that minus, so I'm gonna write it as plus a negative four times 3x plus a negative eight. All right, I need to distribute that negative four that's out front. So I'm gonna write three plus negative four times three x plus negative four times negative eight. That gives me three plus negative four times three is negative 12 x plus negative four times negative eight is 32. Collecting like terms, three plus 32 gives me 35 plus a negative 12 X. I don't like writing plus negative, so I'm gonna write that as 35 minus 12 X. 22. Clear some parentheses, combine like terms. Okay, 2w plus 2 times 6a, that will give me 2 times w plus 2 times 6a. Okay, plus, right, I've got a negative 1 out front times 2w plus negative 5a. Okay, I rewrote that negative out front as plus a negative 1. I rewrote that minus 5a is plus a negative 5a. Now I can go distribute that. 2w plus 2 times 6a is 12a plus negative 1 times 2w is negative 2w plus negative one times negative 5a is 5a. Do I have any like terms? A's, I have 12a plus 5a. That gives me 17a plus, okay, I have 2w plus negative 2w. Well, 2w plus negative 2w 2 plus negative 2 is 0 w. That's just 0. So if I add 0, that doesn't change it. My answer is just 17a. 
two more. Okay, negative 4x. I need to go distribute and get rid of these parentheses. Rewriting negative 4x plus 3. Okay, x plus a negative 2, because I don't like that minus. I'm going to add a negative 2 plus 9x. Now I can go distribute over addition. I'm going to have negative 4x plus 3 times x plus 3 times negative 2 plus 9x. So that gives me negative 4x plus 3x plus a negative 6 plus 9x. Okay, I see three terms that have an x in them. Negative 4x plus 3x plus 9x. So on my calculator, I need to type in negative 4 plus 3 plus 9. Negative 4 plus 3 plus 9 is 8. So I have 8x plus negative 6 plus a negative, I can write that as 8x minus 6. Last one, are these equivalent? 5z plus 4, is that the same as saying 9z? These are different terms. 5z plus 4, you cannot combine those. That is not the same as 9z. Okay, I would love your feedback. Um, let me know if this helped. Uh, otherwise, if it didn't help, I'm not going to keep doing this because this is very, very time consuming. Um, but if it's helpful, I don't mind doing it. Take care.